Here we have a brochure for the Austin Metro from 1980. This was a pivotal car for the company and the dawn of a new age. In 1975, British Leyland went bankrupt and was nationalised by Harold Wilson's Labour government of the era. The years following 1975 saw a massive reorganisation, rebranding and rationalisation of BL, culminating in the creation of the Austin Rover Group in 1982. The Rover SD1 was launched in 1976, but that was pretty much finished by the time BL was nationalised, so that could be seen as the end of the old era, and the Metro can be seen as the beginning of the next. Having not introduced any models for four years, BL depended on it, not only for its survival, but because the British taxpayer had funnelled millions of pounds into making the Mini's replacement a reality. Here was the Austin Metro, the first car to be part of BL's product-led recovery that would take them through into the 1980s. This is a really interesting bit of history as we see the new Austin Chevron logo for the first time and a British Leyland that could sing about its new baby from the rooftops as it did in the adverts with the slogan, a British car to beat the world. Why it only really managed to win in the UK is a story for another day, but here is an early brochure after the Metro was launched on a ship sailing to the Isle of Man, where journalists were first allowed to test the Mini Metro in October 1980. This isn't a launch brochure, it's the first revision of it, marked by the A there at the end of the publication number. But it's nearest, damn it, and so it's late 1980, early 1981. So let's dive in, and it opens up to this big A3 spread with all the Metro models and that slogan, a British car to beat the world. If we go through the range here, we start with the standard Metro and then work up to the Metro L. You see that both those models have indented headlamps and side light and indicator clusters within the bumpers. That can't be good for your aerodynamics, but that's something that was very common at the time. And then moving up, we have the Metro HLE, the economy-based model, the Metro 1.3S, the sporting model that was discontinued when the MG was introduced. And finally, the Metro 1.3 HLS, the top of the range model at the time. You also notice that the only car with a passenger door mirror is the 1.3 HLS. All the other models still lack a door mirror at this stage. It's 40 years this year since the Metro was introduced, so these cars are really getting on a bit. And it reads, the new Austin Metro can fairly be described as the perfect family car of the 80s. Born of advanced technology and British built in Europe's most highly automated plant, it is precisely tuned to the age in which we live. And that's true. Longbridge was one of the most modern car plants in the world when the Metro was launched thanks to an enormous amount of money being spent on it to build entirely new production facilities, especially for the new Metro. More than half of Britain's industrial robots lived at Longbridge in 1980. The compact and purposefully styled Metro makes the utmost use of every teaspoon of fuel, and with 12,000 miles servicing intervals, it is extremely economical to run. But unlike so many economy cars, it is luxuriously equipped delightfully quiet and comfortable, and it has the interior space of many larger saloons. What's more, the Metro uses space so cleverly, it is instantly adaptable to every conceivable family transport need. Although I'm not so sure about luxuriously equipped, Metros are pretty spartan by modern standards, but I am completely sure about the Metro's use of space, something I'll come back to later, but they're unbelievably practical for a car of their size, especially Mark I Metros that we have here. There are five models in the Metro range, each with its own distinctive appeal. This brochure will help you choose the Metro that's exactly right for you. Now, I'm not going to go through absolutely everything in this brochure because that would just bore you all. But we'll go through some of the more important bits and it reads, Never before has so much gone into so little. Indeed, and here we have where the Metro is put together, the new Westworks at Austin's Longbridge plant in Birmingham. Behind every metro is a £300 million investment in the most advanced car production methods in the world. The specially built body assembly plant, bigger than 40 football pitches put together, houses a fully computerised production process where robot machines operate within precise and constant tolerances. And that's 300 million quid of taxpayers' money, I must add. And this page goes on to talk about the fine production tolerances 
of the new Metro, something that BL really had to do because they gained such a bad reputation in the 1970s. If you do want to read this, I will leave the page here now and you can pause the video. And whatever you want to say about Metro production standards, they were better built than BL cars in the 70s. And I think quite a bit of the negativity around the Metro is based on the reputation BL gained for itself in the 70s. Metros weren't the best built cars in the world, as we all know, but they were by no means terrible by early 80s standards, even if they were by no means the best in the world. Just to exemplify, many of the Metro's problems, including front valances, front wings, rear wheel arches all rusting, as well as the fuel spill problem on early cars, were primarily down to design problems rather than production problems, but either way. Now over the page we see a diagram of a Metro uh, where BL are trying to describe all the bits of engineering that push the Metro beyond its competitors. And I'm not going to go through all of this, as I said, but talks about rack and pinion steering. It says, rack and pinion steering, renowned for its lightness, direct feel, and long-lasting precision. On the mandatory 30 mile an hour crash test, the Metro steering column moved rearwards only three quarters of an inch, 14% of the legally allowable movement. Now, rack and pinion steering was something that everybody had by this point, and the Mini had it back in 1959. But the Metro steering is very good, even if BL were promoting it with a technology that had been about for quite a while. And on to that point about the crash test. When the Metro came about in 1980, it was considered to be very safe for a Super Mini, but over the next 17 years, technology would move on, and so would crash testing. What was a simple 30 mile an hour concrete block crash test in 1980, measuring steering column deflection, would turn into an offset impact at 40 miles per hour, something this car was never designed for, which made a car that was pretty safe in 1980 look terrible by 1997. And that's one of the lingering memories of the Metro, that poor crash test result. But the Metro was as safe, if not safer, than its contemporaries in the early 80s, and much safer than a Mini. It's just that the Mini was never tested, and all the Metro's competitors had ceased production by the time Euro NCAP became a thing. Here it mentions the braking system, and the fact that the car has a brake pad warning indicator. Again, that's pretty nice for 1980. And moving down again, it reads the A plus engine, a greatly refined and highly developed version of the well-proven A series engine fitted to Metro as a transverse one liter and 1.3 liter unit. And the A plus engine was still a very good engine that performed well for 10 years. The biggest issue was the gearbox in sump layout and the fact that BL couldn't produce a five speed variant. That made the Metro look really old fashioned by about 1983 or so but it did eventually get five speeds and an ultra modern engine when it was re-engineered in 1990 with Rover's K-Series engine. It also mentions the Metro's aerodynamic styling with a drag coefficient of 0.41. And that's shocking by modern standards, but was all right by the standards of 1980. But again, the indented headlamps on lower spec models wouldn't have helped. Up at the top, it reads that the Metro has 88% all round visibility and that isn't something people talk about anymore which I think is quite poor because in the pursuit of style manufacturers have produced cars that have terrible visibility um, mini convertible safety is another thing but it is possible to have small pillars that are incredibly strong they don't have to be super thick manufacturers just make them that way there's one way in which a metro is definitely better than anything else on the roads today a party piece of the Metro is the hydrogas suspension. It reads that the specially developed hydrogas suspension allows a flat rear floor and ensures consistent ride and handling qualities irrespective of load. Although for cost reasons, the Metro used independent front displacers and rear hydrogas linked side to side. And that meant the Metro wasn't quite as good as it should have been. Dr. Alex Moulton, the inventor of Hydrogas, modified his Metro to the way it was meant to be, and his recommendations were introduced when the Rover Metro was launched in 1990, with its units linked front to rear on each side. And finally, it mentions the Metro's heater system, which has the heater blower in the engine bay in order to reduce noise in the cabin. And just another thing I will note, the Metro ventilation is bloody brilliant. Heaters are great and there's loads of through flow of fresh air. In my car, if you're moving at all, the screen will never steam up and the cabin never feels stuffy despite the massive windows. Here's the Metro 1.3 HLS, the top of the range model. And I do love the way that Mark 1 Metros look. And this is a great color. So we flip over again, we see 
Again, Metro 1.3 HLS, and we finally see some interior stuff. And this is a top of the range model, but it still looks pretty Spartan. But we do have a tachometer, and there is an option of a trip computer. And here's a demonstration of the Metro's carrying capabilities with the seats folded down and the seats up. And you'll see these two on the ends. They're both leaning inwards, and they're leaning against the windows to try and make it look bigger in the back. Although, in a Mark I Metro, there is quite a lot of legroom in the back, thanks to the thin seats. And won't you just look at those seats? They're paprika. I really wish they'd put these kind of colours on modern cars, because the world would be so much more interesting. And I think I will read out this page, just because I think it's quite interesting. It reads, The superbly equipped Metro 1.3 HLS has everything you could possibly need in a family car. Advanced styling, spacious versatility, refined luxury, economy and performance. Even to the casual glance, this is no ordinary motor car. Gleaming paintwork, handsome road wheel embellishes, tinted glass windows, bright rubbing strips, and square styled halogen headlamps proclaim its exclusiveness. Within, the image of opulence is confirmed. Rich velour upholstery, cloth trim on door and rear quarter casings, a soft cloth headlining and molded head restraints are complemented by dozens of other refinements. There's a push-button radio, a digital clock set within the tachometer, useful fascia trays and rubber mats. Big companion boxes front and rear, a moulded handbrake grip, a fully carpeted boot, glove box and rear parcel shelf. All the standard metro virtues of economy and safety are included, many of them enhanced in the HLS by added touches of luxury. Reclining front seats that also tilt and slide forward to give easy access to the rear seats. And concealed seatbelt reels give unhampered entry for rear seat passengers. A comprehensive heating and ventilation system has hidden air extractors at the rear. Electric wash wipe systems for the front and rear screens. Twin rear fog guard lamps, reversing lamps, mud flaps, dipping interior mirror, padded visors with ticket pockets and vanity mirror, a trip mileage recorder, heated rear window, grab handles. I'm sure there should be an and there, but oh well. Perhaps the biggest metro feature of them all is the quite astonishing amount of space within the car and the number of ways in which that space can be used. The metro's unique split action rear seat, wide enough to seat three adults, is divided asymmetrically. So you can fold down all or either part of it to create a variety of seating slash luggage arrangements. There's a more detailed version on the next page, which I'll show you in a minute. But all this, plus outstanding fuel economy and once a year servicing, that's high style Metro HLS motoring for the family of the 80s. And if we do flip over, we see the Metro 1.3 S. It doesn't look... This is meant to be the sporting model, and it doesn't look particularly sporting, save for its stripes down the side. And this was replaced by the MG Metro 1300 when that was launched at the end of 1982. And it, as I said, it doesn't look very sporting. And again, there's no passenger door mirror on the outside either. You see there the split folding rear seat in all its different arrangements. And that was pretty unusual at the time, as pretty much every car had a single bench that folded down, not the split action. This very distinctive Metro has plenty to appeal to the driver with sporting instincts. Its broad, two-colour coach lines are echoed by strikingly different strobe upholstery material and a wealth of high-performance features. Fittingly, the Metro 1.3S is powered by the 1.3 version of the A-plus engine, developed from the famous and thoroughly proved A-series engine. Transversely mounted and driving the front wheels, this willing power unit is matched with the Metro's unique hydrogas suspension, rack and pinion steering, and powerful servo-assisted dual-circuit brakes to provide a heady mix of high performance and precise handling. Instrumentation and driving controls are comprehensive, with a digital clock set within the large rev counter, a bank of nine warning lights in a four inch square quick glance area, a soft feel steering wheel and fingertip stalk controls. For all of its lively flair, the Metro 1.3S is a highly practical car thanks to generous interior dimensions and the unique split action rear seat. Consider the possibilities. With all five seats in the upright position, you have a usable boot space of 7.47 cubic feet. Fold down the single rear seat section and you've created room for a long, narrow article or even a carry cot while retaining rear seating for two. With the double rear seat section folded, there's still room for one adult in the rear and an impressive amount of luggage. 
or for maximum load capacity, you could fold down both rear seat sections to obtain a gross load space volume of 45.7 cubic feet. An additional touch of ingenuity common to all metros is the rear parcel shelf, which can be removed completely or can be swung down and locked to the rear seat squab to make room for tall objects in the boot. Pace, style and all-purpose versatility. That's the Metro 1.3 S. And now over the page again, this is the most popular Metro, the Metro L, and so it does get its own proper two-page spread. And it's the one above base model. And so I will read this one out as well. The Metro L can be said to personify the Metro concept of low-cost, high-luxury, versatile family motoring. All the essential Metro advantages are here, including the versatile split-action rear seat, which lets you choose between more people or more luggage before every journey. With the highly developed 1.0-litre A Plus engine, the Metro L combines sparkling performance, precise handling and impressive fuel economy. Seats are upholstered in an attractive and hard-wearing cloth material, and there's a wealth of stowage space. Fitted companion boxes for the driver and front seat passenger, a lidded glove box, handy trays above the fascia and full-length rear parcel shelf, which can be removed or folded down and locked away when not in use. And interestingly, as Metro production went on, the parcel shelf that clips onto the back of the rear seats was removed, and as was mentioned over here, the twin rear fog guard lamps. And that meant there was a fake on the passenger side, even through Rover Metro production, when the car was meant to become more upmarket. There are simple ways in which they could save money that weren't absolutely necessary, even if they made the car feel a little bit cheaper overall. Again, if you want to read on this side, just pause the video now. Now we move over to the standard Metro. And in this picture at the top, I'm not sure whether you can see that just there. In fact, you probably can't on this, but it looks like there's a football or there's a hot air balloon in the distance behind the car. But if that is a footy, then it's going to clout someone on the back of their head when the driver brakes got to question these people's decisions so yes the standard metro base model mention of a bottom of the range motor car conjures up visions of a stark interior with little comfort and even less luxury in direct contrast the standard metro is extremely well appointed both inside and out in a style that puts many so-called luxury hatchbacks to shame it offers incredible value for money for those who want all-round low-cost motoring this Metro has a single bench seat at the rear, which also folds down to create the Metro's unrivaled 45.7 cubic feet of total load space volume. Metro solves the perennial problem of what to do with the parcel shelf when tall parcels are carried. It locks onto the back of the rear seat squab. All seats and inside door panels are tailored in an attractive embossed of vinyl, which is hard wearing and easy to keep clean. The Metro specification contains many of the items to be found in the Metro L, and of course it shares the advantages of advanced technology, performance, good handling, refinement, reliability, safety, fuel economy, and 12,000 miles servicing. Great motoring, great value, Metro. Although, it annoys me that there's no full stop on the end of there. And now onto the accessories, and there's some pretty high-end bits you can bolt onto your Metro here. There's cruise control, electric windows, electric mirrors, trip computer, and air conditioning, along with all the standard stuff you'd expect, like mats, child seats, roof racks, mud flaps, tow bars, sunroofs, etc. But you can make your Metro a really smart little car with some of these bits. And if you want to read this, again, just pause the video now, and you can read all the bits that you can add onto your Metro. Now you flip over again and we've got tech specs and standard features. Again, these are all a little bit monotonous, so if you do want to have a look, then pause the video and have a look through yourself. But I will mention power because that's something that people seem to care about. Now these are DIN figures, so the 998cc A plus engine produces 44 brake horsepower and the HLE produces 47 brake horsepower. Uh, 1.3 litres, 1275 cc A plus engine, 63 horsepower. And obviously both have four speed gearboxes, hydrogas suspension, etc. And now we move on to the factory fitted extras, including radios and front washers for your lights. And also de novo run flat tyres as well. That's pretty cool for a car of this age. And then finally down here you have 
British Leyland's super cover system, which is it says what it consists of here. Pre-delivery check before the car is delivered, full labour and parts warranty with unlimited mileage, 24-hour AA roadside assistance, AA relay service on the UK mainland, second year protection providing full parts and labour warranty during second year, now with easy payment method. Wow, amazing. You also notice that there isn't much mention of BL here. There are a couple of mentions on the back cover like there, but They've now fully rebranded as Austin Morris and split Leyland cars into two different parts. Austin Morris Group and Jaguar Rover Triumph. And there's also Land Rover Group now as well. And so this is part of the ongoing rationalisation of BL. And this obviously became Austin Rover Group in 1982 when they decided to get rid of the Morris brand. But there you go. A window into the past. At the Austin Metro some 40 years ago this year. I hope you picked up something interesting from this and if you did please click like and maybe even subscribe as well and as ever I'll have more coming along soon.